Today, many are wondering what has happened to her favorite hoarders after they made their last appearance on the show. The reality show, Hoarders, literally changed a lot of lives by making a great contribution to society and bringing awareness about hoarding disorder. It has helped people with this condition to come out of their shells and seek treatment. The series has come to its 11th season, and throughout its run, Hoarders has introduced fans to several interesting personalities. Let's have a look at what their life is currently like. Sandra Cowart, Season 9 The episode revolves around a hoarder and former interior designer, Sandra Cowart. Her story is one of the most challenging cases. She was keeping over 6,000 items in an 8,000 square foot mansion. She wasn't letting anyone inside except her friends and family members while her showing days happened. During her time as a hoarder, she had amassed valuable antiques, furniture, art, and collectibles, but left them behind when she lost the house to foreclosure. The show finale aired with Sandra leaving the house to a couple named Eric and Michael Fuko Rizzo, who renovated the home while preserving much of its original charm, including old doors and staircases. With the assistance of her lawyer, she agreed to let her possessions be auctioned off. Julian Price House, her former mansion, has been renovated by the current owners and it is open for tours with full permission from Sandra. Now, Sandra is living with a friend in Greensboro as a positive force in the community. She's doing well financially thanks to her outstanding auction and giving away lots of items to people who need them. Andy and Becky Otter, Season 10 an episode in this show follows the story of an Indianapolis couple, Andy and Becca Otter, as they attempt to get rid of their house of over 160 tons of garbage through professional cleaning services. The Otters are not hoarders by nature. Their problem was caused by the stress and depression they suffered after the death of Andy's father. In January 2010, local authorities in Marysville, Indiana, carried out a raid on the couple's home after receiving complaints from neighbors who described how many trucks were coming to the house and how many hours were spent inside. The majority of the junk was based on the otter's private property, but some were located in public areas such as their yard or across their street. The only thing that stood between them and the total removal of their remaining belongings was a horse trailer containing over 90 tons of trash. The couple was assisted by a team of expert cleaners who helped them sanitize their Marysville home. It wasn't easy to completely clean it up. It took about 15 months and 40 truckloads of trash, but eventually they managed to do so. They are now living happily in their new home. Sherry Season 11 The Hoarders crew has been filming for almost 25 years, but Sherry's story is different from most. Sherry came to the show with a six-foot-tall pile of trash that threatened to overwhelm her and endanger her family, especially her daughter. She was determined to get it cleaned up, but she didn't have the money or the manpower to do it herself. It was hard for her to accept help, but she eventually agreed to let her husband enlist the assistance of a crew from Pittsburghers Against Household Hazardous Waste, or PAHHW, to clean out the mess. After weeks of working on the house, PAHHW brought in a team from Siri Clean. The company got involved and took care of everything from the initial cleaning of the house to taking out all of the trash. They used industrial equipment and carefully selected chemicals to remove rubbish without damaging Sherry's walls or floors. When they were finished, they sealed the house so that no more trash could get inside. Now, Sherry is living in a clean home with fresh air where she has no fear of risking her family's health. Patricia, Season 10 In this show, Patricia is one of the hoarders who doesn't let anything go. She has three homes in Florida, and all three are covered with junk. Patricia was an ER nurse for 20 years, but when she retired at age 54, she had nothing better to do. To support her family, she began selling objects that other people discarded, old furniture, knickknacks, and other items. After she was slapped with a fine for hoarding from the state of Florida, Patricia promised to follow the advice of the experts on hoarders to get rid of her habit. Unfortunately, according to her neighbors, it seems like she never changed. Patricia hasn't changed much since the cleanup process. She still collects junk and stores them inside her room. She claims that she has a deep emotional attachment with her collections and that she loves to keep them safe even though they are all useless. A Facebook post from her neighborhood revealed that Patricia has continued collecting trash. 
Patricia was a hoarder by day, recycling queen by night. She had two storage units that were stuffed to the brim with junk, and she started hoarding her neighbor's trash as well. It even came to a point wherein she attempted to use her neighbor's driveways to store her junk. Her latest venture has resulted in a complaint filed by neighbors because they found that many items are stored outside instead of being kept inside her home as per city codes and safety regulations. It even came to a point wherein she attempted to use her neighbor's driveways to store her junk. Patricia's case is currently under investigation by the local government. During the cleanup process, Patricia was not allowed to be on her own property and had to be escorted at all times. Alona and Roger Stink, Season 9 Alona and Roger Stink might no longer be living on their property. The couple has been evicted from their home in Milwaukee and is now living somewhere else. The house the couple lived in before their eviction was condemned by the city after it was deemed uninhabitable. The Stanks have appeared on Hoarders a few times over the years, but they have also made appearances on other shows like Dr. Phil, during which Dr. Phil would try to help them get rid of their hoarding issues. The couple had multiple foreclosure attempts on their property and even ended up in court several times for failing to clear the clutter from their property. The couple also kept some of their animals, which seemed to cause a lot of problems for neighbors and animal control officers, who were forced to come in and remove animals that were not properly cared for. Some of these animals later passed away while others were adopted out. Ilona says she is still in denial about her situation despite being evicted from her house with her husband Roger because she's been living there since 1992 and it's just a big part of her life now. Carol, Season 11 In this episode, Carol and her husband, Dave, were on the verge of foreclosure because of all the stuff they had collected over the years. Carol was even threatening to attack one of the crew members who came to help her pack. Then there's her son and daughter, wondering if their father would be safe in their own home with all those piles of junk around him. The show gives the viewers a peek at what happens when hoarders are moved from their homes. It becomes apparent how badly the old house has been neglected. After Dave passed away a few months after the filming was completed, his son returned to finish cleaning out his dad's belongings. What he found shocked him. All those boxes full of personal records were covered by trash and dust on floorboards. Meanwhile, there were also cartons filled with his father's tax returns dating back years that had never been filed because he'd lost them in an earlier move. The crew had to clean up all that mess before they could sell the house to recover some money for Carol's living expenses. But it revealed just how bad things had gotten for this family before she got clean. The number of orders who appear in the series is quite shocking. The show's creator, a &E Network's senior vice president, Henry Schlieff, wanted to tell a story about people who are dealing with compulsive hoarding disorder, people who have been giving up their lives to live in a storage unit. He also wanted to show that hoarders can be open about their issues and function normally in society. The truth is, this is a very difficult disorder to overcome, and it often takes professional help to sort out the problem. But it's encouraging to see that most of our favorite hoarders are doing well and have turned their lives around. Here's to new beginnings.